Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another pregame video uh, brought to you by the Jackal Den. I am your president and host, as always, Daryl Keith Hendon, a.k.a. the Fairweather Rugby fan, as the Jackals head to the city of, uh, of Kronk Music, the home of Coca-Cola, and a state where you can buy boiled peanuts and peaches on the side of the road. Yes, if you are ever in the Deep South, Try boiled peanuts just to say, hey, you have tried them at least once in your life. Uh, it is, uh, it's a different, uh, it's a different kind of snack item. We'll just leave it at that. But uh, lineups have not officially been announced as of uh, looking at 6 p.m. local Central Standard Time here. So we've gone on the MLR app. We think we have a pretty good idea of what the lineup is for both teams. So if there are some mistakes. We apologize. Uh, does not look like there will be a live uh, gathering tomorrow as it is 11 a.m. start and everyone is busy. I am packing to move, moving into a house on Tuesday. Um, my fiance, she had a job locally, so she'll be moving down on the first full time. So hopefully uh, the new studio, you guys get a chance to see it. It's a, it's a little different than this, this apartment I'm currently living in. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the rugby ATL lineup here. They are coached by former Modi All Black New Zealand native, uh, former Crusader, former Blue Fly Half Center, Stephen Brett. Uh, he's 37 years of age. So not a huge coaching uh, history behind them. They currently, much like our foes last weekend, currently sitting in fourth, five points behind Rugby New York for that final spot, playoff spot there in the East. Uh, last week, they squeaked by by a single point over Chicago. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody's looked at what Toronto has done the last two weeks. Two ties in a row, man. What a shocker for them. But uh, it's looking like the weather is going to be 22 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit at uh, the 11 a.m. Central Standard Time kickoff with a slight chance of rain. Uh, at Silverback Stadium there uh, on the campus of Life University there in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And you will see many Life University students and or, or alumni on this squad. But we'll go ahead and start it off with the front row will consist of USA Eagle Alex Mahon, Sidney Tobias, he is a former Bull there in South Africa, and John Roy Jenkinson, who is a former Bull, Greek Wall, and SAU20 player there. Lots of South Africans on this squad. Uh, the blocks will be Justin Basson. He's a former Cheetah, former Stormer, and former Stormer and former Shark. Uh, I think he was a Shark very recently. I think he had a single cap with the Sharks recently. And Johan Monson, who is a former Greek Wall and a Parle uh, grad. Uh, that's a big, big, big school. Um, when you talk about schoolboy rugby in South Africa, that's usually one of the first ones that people will talk about. The flankers will consist of uh, Vili Helu. Uh, he is a USA Eagle and Quebec native and Canadian international. Matt Heaton is captaining the side at the number seven and anchoring it all Life University grad Ross Deacon. Irish born former Harlequin and Nell Sanders will be the scrum half for the game tomorrow with Kurt Coleman, a former Stormer and Southern King and another big rugby school in South Africa, Stellenbosch. Jack Shaw, who is a Canadian in the U20s, will be the left wing, and the right wing will be uh, former Manawatu Turbo, Turbo and Tasman Mako. I tried to figure out his iwi, for any of you guys that are not familiar with that word. Iwi is like tribe or your people in, in New Zealand, in Aotearoa, to be specific about it. That's Modi pronunci pronunciation of the country. Um, but he is uh, <laughs> Terangatharia. Waitokia. I'm pretty sure I butchered it, but it's, yeah. Try it again. Tiranga Tira, Tiranga Tira, Waitokia. I think that is how you pronounce it. But yes, he is the right wing for at Rugby ATL. The centers will consist of Canadian U20 and Cal Brad and former teammate of Sam Gola, uh, Seth Purdy, and Irishman Will Leonard. And anchoring it all off will be Ruita Biddle, who is a Kiwi. Born in New Zealand, played some professional rugby in Russia, of all places. What an odd place to be from. It is a 5-3 split off the bench for rugby ATL with Louisville grad uh, Isaac Bales, uh, 
Grand Canyon University grad, Lincoln Sai, Sai, and Will Burke. Originally, Will Burke was originally signed to the Dallas Jackals, uh, and then whenever we went dormant before the COVID season, he left, uh, and he is a University of Buffalo grad. Uh, Nahui Milan, he is a Nahul Milan. He is a Argentinian-born player, played for San, Ver San Fernando. Uh, the Argentin uh, Argentina U-20s Los Pumitas, as they're called, and Yaguares 15, Quince. Uh, so he is a Argentinian. I'm sure he'll have lots to say to our roster. And uh, Damon Torres, who is a Life U grad and Texas native. Those will be the forward replacements. Ryan Reese, a USA Eagle Life U grad and another Texas native, will be a back replacement with Martini Tal... Tal Martini Talapusi, I'm pretty sure I butchered that as well. He is a Wellington, uh, New Zealand native, and he is a Life University grad as well. And Austin White, a Tulsa, Oklahoma native, and also a Life University grad. And that is Rugby ATL 23-man squad for tomorrow. Now we go over to the Jackals one. This is the one where we really, uh, if you got on the Major League Rugby app, had J.P. Aguirre starting at prop. I think that was a, a fluke, um, so we'll see. I hope to God he's not starting at, at prop. But uh, the front row will consist of a Canadian international, Liam Murray, Canadian U-20, originally born in South Africa, but uh, represents Alberta, uh, Edmonton, Alberta, and that would be Dewey Katsia at hooker, and the reigning uh, Jackal Den Player of the Week, Juan Pablo Saiz, the former Puma. Actually found out he made his debut in the second game of the 2018 Rugby Championships against New Zealand. Um, if you go back and watch the game, he came in, I think, at like the 58th minute. It's a bit odd to see the guy there, but uh, yeah, that was uh, J.P. Sice's uh, debut for Los Pumas. Uh, Sam Gola, future USA Eagle, and Lucas Burr, the dependable 4-5 and five combo there at Locke. Uh, El Bigote, Conrado Aurora, uh, will be at flanker, and he will be opposite our pres or uh, our captain, Geronimo Gomez Vara, Geronimo Gomez Vara. And anchoring it all, as usual, the Namibian International, the tackling machine, 197 tackles through this round, Adrian Boyson. Uh, former Puma. Pedro Imhoff uh, got to also watch his debut game. You can find it on YouTube from the 2013 American America's Rugby Cup. Uh, made his debut there with the Pumas way back then. And Tincho Elias will be the ever uh, ever useful 9-10 combo there. Uh, Marcos Moroni moves to wing once again with uh, Supes himself, Campbell Johnstone, at the right wing. The center will be J.P. Aguirre, unless they move him to prop. And Thomas Milano's the multiple try score from a couple of weeks back. An interesting put at uh, spot at number 15, a guy who we've only really seen play scrum half this entire season, and that would be Natsa Valentini. Uh, meeting Natsa, Nazareno is his full name. I found out that that's Nazareth in Spanish, so that's uh, that's where he gets his. That's what that actually means. So. Um, he's a really nice guy to talk to after the trainings a couple weeks back. He's another guy I got to talk to a little bit. Uh, the front row replacements will consist of Argentinian Nicholas Rival Pitt from the city of Boston. Uh, I wish I could do a Boston accent. His is good because he's from there. Uh, Connor Robinson, another guy who I would not doubt becomes a USA Eagle one day. And a Canadian international, I have started calling him Logan for the obvious reason that he is Canadian and has facial hair and kind of has the bushy thing. But uh, if you get the reference for that, Kyle Steves, AKA Logan, the Canadian international. Looking to finally get in on another game, uh, Carson Shoemaker and West Virginia University grad, uh, Cam Nelson will make up the forward replacements. Uh, Hot Wheels Christensen, Danny Christensen, will be our scrum half replacement with making his return uh, after some time with the Hawks, Jason Tidwell. We'll talk about him in a moment. And the Uso himself, my Uso, Luis Satama, another guy I always like to talk to just because he's Samoan and Samoans are cool. 
So that would be our 23 man squad. We'll talk about Jason Tidwell real quick. Any of you guys that were at the scrimmage game against New Orleans, and uh, Rick and I talked about this a lot after that game. And it was the fact that when Tidwell came into the game at wing, it completely changed the dynamic. One, he's very, very fast. And two, he can tackle well, which is something we have lacked. John Stone's held his own, but it's something that's lacked from our American wingers this year. And Tidwell is, I, I can see Tidwell get a shot, too. I mean, obviously, he's already playing with the Hawks. I can see Tidwell getting a call up to the USA Eagles at some point, too. But uh, he is definitely something we have missed, and it'll be good to see him. And hopefully, he he's come back. It's been a good experience for him to go and uh, train with a kind of an all-star team group of young guys. And hopefully we get to see some magic. I know his parents and his family are super stoked about him being named to the 23-man squad. I'm stoked that he got named to it. I mean, I, I can't wait to see this guy come off the bench and see what he can do. Because uh, we saw against New Orleans, he completely changed the dynamic. They had to adjust their defense. When he had the ball, he was getting some space. He was doing some offloads. He was making tackles. He was making some good runs. So I think having him come into the game will be a definite game changer. Um, and, you know, if they need to move Moroni to fullback, which we'll talk about next. Now, Nessa Valentini, um, really cool guy to talk to. It, so it's pretty obvious. I think Ali Torres is out. Thomas Baravalli is out with a broken wrist. And... Oh, man, you, you kind of are getting to where, like, we don't really have a whole lot to throw at fullback. And our best fullback is uh, on a bye week in Seattle. Obviously, Adrian has gone up there. If you haven't watched any of the games, go back and watch the games. He is absolutely flourishing with the way that Seattle team runs. Offensive, defensively, it feeds into his skill sets very, very well. And it's at times like this where you're like, crap, we really could use him. Um, another guy that I, I think would work well at fullback right now, would, maybe I'm wrong, would be like maybe a Hayden Hill or something. But uh, Hayden is currently in Western Australia playing playing rugby in the down under, having a great time living his most life. If you don't follow him on social media, you should because he's living his most life there in Australia. And it's I, I, I really, really wonder about Nansa at fullback because he's not really the most physically aggressive guy, and you kind of need that at fullback. Like, he can kick. Like, I'll hand him that. He's good under the ball, but are you going to trust him with defense? Uh, I mean, I think at this point it's kind of just like, what's the old saying, old Mother Hubbard? We don't got much in the cupboard right now, and with Alejandro Torres being out, Kubila is still a week away, it looks like. He's really going to be a center replacement more than anything. What do we really, what options do we really have at fullback? We don't really have much. Um, yeah, so I, seeing that kind of put on there kind of really puts a bit of a, like, yeah, this is the point at which we're at right now. We're pretty much just throwing whoever we can out there and um, hoping that it works. And I hope it does. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he proves me wrong. Maybe he's really good at fullback. I, I, from the bit I've got to see him play, I kind of wonder. Um, he does play fly half hand, scrum half. And usually at fullback, you need that ability to kick, obviously, well, be under the ball. But you also need that ability to play defense because you're the last line of defense. And I don't know about not so really at this point. So we shall see. I'm not going to do a prediction of scores. I think right now they're f like I saw the poll. I think it was like 68 to 32, 68% they win, 32% we win. Um, this is the same situation as we found ourselves in last week, a team that is desperately trying to get a playoff spot. So they're going to want the win and the bonus point. Um, if we go down, 28 nothing early, we're, we're going to be in some trouble. Now, they do have a weaker bench and a weaker team in general, which we got really used to that last year. There's been a couple of teams this year that, like, they've done that, but then there's been teams like Seattle that didn't, and they beat the brakes off of us. 
So we shall see what happens with the game tomorrow. Uh, we will be going live on the YouTube here. I will be going live about five minutes before the game. I'll have the TV plugged in here. I'll put my headphones on so we don't get shut down. If you guys want to come and hang out with me, I'm down, as always. Uh, it'll be my last broadcast from this apartment as I'm, like I said, moving this Tuesday. Uh, everything's set up. We've got the movers, all that kind of stuff. But uh, before we get to that, we've got a, we've got a game. And uh, you never know. This could be a, a, a whooping or it could be very, very close. It just depends. It just depends on what we decide to do tomorrow. And it depends really. The big question mark for me is at fullback with Natsa, but I don't have a question with Jason Tidwell. I think when he gets in the game, you're going to see some changes, but the problem has been as of late. Last week, we had two guys on the bench, that didn't, three guys that didn't get into the game. We need to start pulling our guys off the bench. I'm sorry. I know I'm not the coach, but, you know, if we're down – 20 points and there's 30 minutes, 25 minutes left. Like, man, throw the guys off the bench in there. I mean, it's not like what what could it hurt? What could it hurt? We've seen Danny Christensen his explosive speed. That's why I call him Hot Wheels. Still harken back to that Seattle game when he came in and he made that deep run and then Boyce ended up taking it across after a couple of offloads. But it's like we see him. He's got the speed, he's got the hunger, he's got the desire. Give them a chance. Come on, man. Put these guys in. Let's see what we got. I, I can get, you You know, riding your front row as long as you can. I get that. We don't really have any lock replacements, but Gola and Burr have done just fine in that, that spot. And I get not wanting to switch out your captain and your flankers. You know, these guys are guys that kind of run the engine room. But, like, God, man, these backs, dude. Come on. Let's, let's give some of these guys a shot, man. I mean, what do we got to lose? We're not making the playoffs. Let's build some momentum for next season. But with that being said, uh, should be an, hopefully an exciting game. Like I said, I will be going live for it. You can catch it on the Rugby Network, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, Central Standard Time. And uh, hopefully we get a post-game video with Rick the Jackal King Collins, and we have some positive things to say, unlike last week early. But uh, till next time, remember, this is the Jackal Den, made, Jackal Den YouTube made by the fans for you, the fans. Cheers, guys.